Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today we have got our usual three piles, but what I've done is I've put a card on top of each. You can pick per planet, so you can pick as per your usual group or you can pick as per your favorite planet. Now I know all the planets are not represented here. We will get through them all as the weeks go on, but I thought I'd start with these three. We've got Mars in the first house, we've got Sun in the 10th or Jupiter in the fifth. So you can choose on that basis. These are of course from the Vedic Astrology deck. Thank you to those who have bought one. It's happening, sales are happening and that's awesome. So thank you to everyone who has made a purchase. I have finished the Nakshatra deck that will be ready perhaps in a month or two. I will do a launch video for that, but otherwise choose from your group. And I think the topic today, what are we going to do? This is going to be something simple like, how's your energy right now? Or something really simple like that. I haven't really worked out much of a topic this time. I thought it could just be a bit of a wild card topic. So something that's just quite general. But feel free to pick from your pile, group, planet, whatever you like, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one, then you are in the right place. Now, before we shuffle these, I'm going to put that there and we'll take one from here and we'll actually look at this a lot sooner. Normally, I like to lay them all out first and then start speaking about them. But you know what? I'm thinking let's get the reading going a bit sooner. So I will take one of these and I'll take another Oracle card as well. And we can chat about these three. So let's take one of these and then we'll take a look with Tarot and see what's going on. And we'll take all of these as upright. Oh, these are all over the place. So I'll just I'll just shuffle and then and then if it's upside down I'll I'll make it upright. All right, let's see what we've got. So we've got Mars in the first house already. Oh nice. That's beautiful. Happy life. Live a less guarded life. That's interesting because we've got Mars. Mars is on the battlefield, okay? Mars is on the battlefield. He's, you know, is, is he guarding, protecting your life? This is quite interesting. All right, so straight away we've got some guidance here. Happy life, live a less guarded life. And we've got sensitivity. Okay, and it's really interesting that you've come through via this card, via this strong, bold, Mars in the first house card. Here it says physically strong and driven, impulsive and enthusiastic, can do attitude, body inflamed. Yeah, that can happen with displacement, cuts, injuries, scratches, competitive, courageous and impatient. Okay, so you're clearly being asked to take a different pace to life, slow down, be sensitive, I would say to yourself. Okay, we've got Mars in the first house here. This is very much about you. This is very, very much about your physical body, physical health as well. Maybe you need to, to rest, not do as much. So there's a real slow down type message coming through straight away. Let's take a look and see what we have with tarot. And I'll draw more as I need to. This deck is new. It's the Sufi, I think it's called Sufi Wisdom Oracle. It's so lovely really enjoyed having it in my collection. I just got it recently and I've drawn from it a couple of times for myself. I just love it. The artwork is really nice in there too. Okay. And I might as well draw the clarifiers straight away. But already we've got some messages in here. Okay. I know for me, I need to slow down. <laughs> I've been getting some big slow down messages. Oh, look at that, the Ten of Wands. I mean, that's just, that appears in group one a lot. 
so yes you have been working hard you know carrying perhaps some kind of burden but something here is telling you to slow down enjoy a different pace and I don't know about where you are but in Australia we're having I think we're having a public holiday on Monday which is quite interesting I normally don't know when there's a public holiday I'm usually just working every day but a friend of mine told me hey there's a public holiday so who knows I might go out take some time out myself <laughs> all right happy life live a less guarded life sensitivity I've also got a number five here which can be about change something might be changing in your world let's take a look justice okay Page of Cups, lovely. Temperance, healing, nice. Beautiful. And I mean, this really fits in with what we've already got going on here. There's something about you really needing to change the pace. I think you've been just going strong, going hard at something, working really hard at something, overworking working too much doing too much thinking it's all up to you as well here thinking that everything's on your shoulders two of pentacles again there's this waiting game theme that continues here with group one that's fine oh no way <laughs> I mean, every time, Group One, this is always here for you guys. Ten of Wands. Wow. Okay. That is so interesting. We have to keep an eye on this. But see, now that I'm thinking that the Ten of Wands is always here, am I projecting, am I creating this card's arrival each time? And that might be something you need to think about. Are you creating the perpetuation of whoops apologies just totally knocked the camera okay that must have happened for some reason because i never do that hmm all right a couple of things to factor in here so number one see this is why a change of energy is needed because you might be able to put this burden down whatever this is whatever this heavy thing you're having to carry or that's on your shoulders right is it there because because of your own projection as well so just as i was saying with the cards i always keep thinking oh group one they're always getting this ten of wands they're always getting this and because i think that maybe that's why i drew it if i didn't think that thought if i came to group one and never thought about the ten of wands and it's so funny it was on the back of the deck that was weird too I didn't put that there, not at all. Like that, that, that's just how that was. So this is fascinating. And if you, it's a, this is about really genuinely switching off, unwinding, changing the energy. This keeps being perpetually created. Okay, let's keep going here. Oh, beautiful. Ten of Pentacles. Gosh, and that's a stunning Ten of Pentacles too. Look at that so beautiful this is here for you the thing that you're working so hard to create maybe you already have this maybe you have this but for some reason you maybe you're not seeing it sometimes that's a thing as well you know and so many of my clients they have their children they have their partner they know all of that so th this is there what are you working what are you working so hard to create or to achieve because I kind of feel like you have this I feel like you know who your people are you know who your family is I want to see what this is what are you what are you working so hard towards do you know let's use this 
What are you working so hard? What's this burden about? What are you working to create? What is it that you can't let go? Because I think in many, I think you have, there's something about your life, you have all the things that you actually need. I'm not getting this Ten of Pentacles as a dream that you're wanting to create. It's around you. You have this. You know, we've got here the partner, the child, the pets, the house. You've got it. There's something about this that you have or you are living in this way. But there's a burden. So, okay, let's get back to this burden. What are you working so hard to create or to achieve? Okay, let's take it. Jupiter in the ninth. Okay, excels as a lawyer. What does it say here? Excels as a lawyer, philosopher, lecturer. Acquires property, fond of siblings, strong physique, wealthy, travels. If afflicted, could scam others. Okay. Would there be an affliction here with Mars? No, there's no affliction. I think it's just the next level up that you're trying to create, isn't it? And there's something about the way you're working, which is possibly stressing you out a little bit. Or maybe it's hard on the physical body. Let's see what this is. What is, what's the Page of Cups? Because that seems nice and that seems, and do I want to use this deck? No, I think I want to use this one. Okay, so what, what is the new start here in, now it's emotions, it's perhaps a new level of love, perhaps it's closeness, more closeness with your children, more closeness with your partner. Perhaps it's a deeper connection with the people who are around you. So let's take a look. Four of Wands, yeah, this is that happy home thing. This is, and this can be seen, a lot of people see this as a soulmate, twin flame card. And I feel like there's a new level of intimacy or closeness with the people around you. So this is with your friends, with your family, with your parents, with your children, with partner people around you. But I'm seeing this as actual people in your life. This is great energy. Okay, so we've got clarity on that. Justice, let's take a look at this. Why is the justice card here? It's like you're waiting for something to play out or to materialize. Let's see what this is. I'm seeing that you've got all the ingredients for your happy life right where you are. Like, I don't think you have to go anywhere or I don't think you're waiting for something to come in. Maybe there's, let's see what this is, Justice and Two of Pentacles. The Chariot, Movement. Okay. You're waiting for something to move or shift or budge or come to fruition or happen. And I just had the phrase, it will happen in its own time. Okay, so we're good there. I think we're good all around. Group number, there's some time delay. But there is movement coming in and this is also a movement. This could be a travel type card as well, Jupiter in the ninth there. But I think the overall message is very much just about, about appreciating what you have around you right now because it does feel to me like you've got it all. I don't think there's anything you're missing. And that's wonderful. Okay, let's take a look. We'll see what this is. Actually, I want to get something from the bottom. I have no idea, by the way, what's in here as well. Like I just, <laughs> I never know. I wrote these so long ago. I hardly go on Instagram these days. Let's take three. Okay. 
And then once the jar runs out, I don't know what we'll do. We might do something completely different. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Like this cup, you are full of your own opinions and speculations. How can I show you wisdom unless you first empty your cup? Okay, this feels quite zen-like. No, no Jin Senzaki. Okay. Do you know that's fascinating because we've got the temperance card here. And yeah, I think there's this something about something about you relaxing, letting everything go. And one of the things I've been doing is I've just been feeling what it is to be in my own energy. So one of the things I've been doing is like, like I will have a day or two off from social media and just have a day or two off from anyone else's opinion, my opinion, anything. Just like, yeah, I have been kind of doing this. And it's so good. You, kind of, you just immerse yourself back in your own energy. You feel what it feels like to be you by yourself. No other opinions, no social media, no one telling you what to do, advising you, giving you it, nothing. Like, and no pick cards, which is very difficult for me. But <laughs> I've had, this week I've hardly watched anyone else's pick cards, which is a big achievement for me because I love watching them as well. But yeah, and I, and I just be me. And, and it's, it feels really good. Like we've got to do that from time to time. Okay. People think that intimacy is about passion, but intimacy is about truth. When you realize you can tell someone your truth, when you can show yourself to them, when you stand in front of them and their response is, you're safe with me, that's intimacy. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's beautiful. And I feel like part of what this is saying is that you'll be able to do that more and more with the people in your life right now. Okay, so this is not people coming in or people on the horizon or soul tribe people that you're going to attract. Or No, this is your actual people around you in the now. You'll be able to, to be your true self with them more. I feel like... There's something about the relationships in your life that will deepen and grow stronger. This is really nice energy, group number one. And that will help with whatever this burden is that you're carrying. Oh, time's about to run out. Okay, thought is a pointer. Thought is a pointer. Without intelligence, the pointer has no value. Oh, this is deep, isn't it? Yes, and this is really, we're kind of getting to the heart of meditation. Meditation will take you to a place of deep kind of wordless intelligence. I think is definitely one of the things that's being said here, and that's beautiful. That is a good place to go to. And that, you will get there, yes, you can get there through meditation, but yes, you can also get there through just having a day off from technology, from books, from social media, from what other people think, what you think, like no opinions. I like this. There's something, you need to do this, group number one. You need to empty your cup of thoughts, of opinions, of ideas, and just feel what it is to be. And we can do that through meditation, but we, we can do that through, you don't have to sit formally and do all that, you know, thing. You can just you can just switch off the internet for a day. Isn't that amazing? And that, that'll do it, you know, and just go for a long walk in nature, spend time with your family, spend time with the people that you love. That's going to be so healing. And you need some of that. We've got the temperance card here. You need time out. You need time to heal. You need time to recharge and rest. Group number one, thank you so much for joining. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I'm a bit behind on comments, but I'll get to them. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two or sun in the 10th house, 
then you are in the right place. Let's take a look at Sun in the 10th house. I do think this is my favorite star. It says here, success in all undertakings, winning, strong, happy, famous, intelligent, has money, power, children, loves music, acquires ancestral wealth, magnetism. How amazing. So you've got that card, that's brilliant. Now, before I shuffle those, I thought we'll start with the oracles and I'll read them as I go. So that way we get into the reading a bit quicker. Oh, that's poking out, let's take it. And we'll take one of these. I think this title, the title of this one is gonna be, because I've just done group one, and I think it's really, we're really focusing on what's happening around you now in your immediate world. So let's take a look. Lovely. Open mind. Replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one. Oh, I love the artwork here. Gosh, that's beautiful. Wow. Great. And that kind of matches your card deck as well. Okay. And this could be an old cycle, a new and exciting cycle to do with your work. Because we do have sun in the 10th house there. Integrity, fantastic. Okay, brilliant. We've also got a number nine here as well. I should know who this is, but I don't. Well, I mean, gosh, is it Lord Shiva? Because there is a trident. No, it's not, because that's different. I'll look it up and I'll put it on the screen so that we know who it is. I'll look up the book. Because, yeah, I haven't got the book. Oh, that's just scratched. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's see. Integrity. Interesting. And we've got this kind of blue type of color that's coming through. If it's a light blue, that can be the moon. Dark blue is very much Saturn. And, well, look at that. Saturn and moon have made their presence in this reading. Yeah, the two of those together is integrity for sure. That is, you know, Saturn-moon combination is... That's the person who's all about honesty, integrity, and all of that. Okay. So yeah, I'm definitely getting some kind of work vibes here, but let's see, let's see what the cards say. Oops. Okay. And I'll get three of these. Right. Okay. Let's see what we have. Oh, the star. Healing. Beautiful. Again, look at how similar these are visually. Beautiful. Six of Swords. All right, so you are leaving something behind. Possibly. And the devil. Do you know, and this is making me think 10th house Capricorn, the devil. Yeah. Wow, Ace of Pentacles. This is my favorite card in this deck because look at that gold foiling there. Isn't that incredible? That's great. All right. You're working hard, Eight of Pentacles. Yeah. You're on your pathway of mastery. Oh, beautiful. Perfection. All this. Look at that. Nine of Pentacles. This is so incredible. I mean, this could not be more of a Capricorn type spread. And we've got here Sun in the 10th house. So those of you who chose this, this is very much about work. This is very much about abundance. This is just totally about making money, really. Making money, making abundance, becoming independently wealthy. And I would say there's something about 
the way that you work. Now this could be, you might be in a toxic work environment or there's toxic others around you. We might um, draw some cards about this and explore. So this can be a couple of things. This could, or this could be, this could even be something like, um, perhaps you're in a job, but you'll walk away and you'll become an independent contractor or something like that. You work more on your terms, more in a way that you like. You could even earn more money that way, you know? So this can be a few different things. Let's have a look. Let's see. Let's see what this is. The devil. And, and it also could be there's something maybe that you are addicted to. We can see that with the devil as well. So and like if you break free of that addiction, then you'll be able to be more um, independent at the top in command. Like this could be, and this is, might sound silly or something, but like this could even be something like addiction to approval. You know, it could even be that. So we've got here, replace the old cycle with a new and exciting one. So this is the new, this is exciting. This is going to bring in a lot of abundance. But it requires some little bit of healing here and you leaving something behind to do with this. And that can be, as I say, yeah, addiction to approval. Um, could be toxic workmates around you or people who, who are not in, in their integrity. They are not... They're making life difficult, something like this. Let's take a look and try and get some more information about what is it that you're either leaving behind, letting go, healing from. And it is in regards to something to do with your workplace. Okay, so let's get a clarification on this devil card. But I mean, fantastic spread otherwise. This is really great. So many signs indicating that the next thing that's about to open up for you is going to be so good you're going to love it like it's going to feel like this it's going to be you know the midday sun in the midday spot can't have it any better than that so let's take a look sun at the top where it should be. All right, let's take a look. So let's focus on the devil. Well, the top is Capricorn. It is that whole thing. So let's think devil. Let's think Capricorn. What is it that we're walking away from? What is it that we are healing? There are two cards. Okay, let's take them both. Oh no, there's three. All right, let's take them all. Knight of Swords. Okay, so there's some action needed. Look at that. And you're kind of getting your sword out, your sword of truth. And it's so interesting because we do have a, this could be a sword of truth here as well. It's already on the table. So, okay, we've got a sword of truth there. Maybe you need to speak up about something. Nine of cups. Okay, so this is to do with emotions, but there's something about you being quite fine. You're okay. Let's have a look what this is. Queen of Wands. Ooh. You might have to... This could... So this is quite a specific message here. This could be that there's a lady at your workplace who is... Yeah, she's... There's something about her that is too much. <laughs> right? There's like... Um, She's too much and y you are you are in this situation having to I'm getting like mm, bring reality to the table like because she might be she might have some grandiose plans or something but you're like we haven't got the budget for that or I, I don't know this is some very specific thing. 
And what I would say is that you, you know, your intuition knows, you know the answer. And if it means having to walk away from this situation, do that because the new that you're going to create is, is really going to be fantastic. You've got to trust in yourself because you're the worker. You're the one who gets the stuff done. You know. I think if there are some pie in the sky people around you, that's fine. You might have to weather it for a little bit. Mm, let's see, what else do I want to ask? How are we doing on time? I think we're okay. So I think we know what this devil situation is. I think it's a challenging or difficult lady in the workplace. She might be senior, have quite a lot of power or something. This is, let's see, let's see, because you need to trust yourself. You need to trust in you. I'll, I'll get a clarifier on this Eight of Pentacles here. Let's see what comes. Well, it could be anywhere in this row. Let's just see what more information we get. And then we'll probably see what comes in the quotes. Okay. Hmm. Aha. <laughs> oh, Mars in the ninth house, conflicts with authority. Yeah, I, there, there's something going on. It's self-made. You are self-made. You are going to be incredible when you run your own business or you leave your job and you want to contract out or whatever it is you want to do, however you want to maneuver going forward. I'm getting a lot of positive signs that yes, that's for you. You can do it. You can go it alone. Okay, we've got nine of pentacles here. Nine of pentacles is you're enjoying wealth on your own. Okay, you're making money on your own. So there's something about you kind of not uh, now it's time to break free from authority, really. And we've got here conflicts with authority. It's self-made. You are a self-made person. Okay, you've got Mars here. You know, and, and this is the sun is usually here. The father is here telling everyone what to do. But it's Mars is here going, I don't care what you have to say. I'm doing it this way, right? So we've got good imagination, intelligence, street smart, long distance travel. Separated from father, okay, yeah. Discovers independent spirituality, sure, but there's an independence here. And I think you need to get independent from your work. And you're going to be successful. You're going to experience the joy of being your own boss, of getting into a position where you are at the top. Nobody can fire you because it's your thing, right? So there's some, you need to move, maneuver into that position. Now, you might be some steps away from from there but there's something about there's a new cycle that can open up where you th there will be incremental cycles for you in order to get here and it will be things like yeah switching from uh, and because I, I did this I was in you know paid jobs and then but then I switched to being a contractor and I was able to be a bit more in charge of my time and then I worked okay I'd work four days a week and then you know bit by bit I was able to go more part-time and then start my own side thing you know and then grow this and like that right so there's lots of steps so I don't know exactly what step you are on but you are in the process of now navigating to this place where you're indispensable you can't be fired you'll be at the top you know uh, all of that so you are making your way there and that's exciting okay and there's always layers and levels to that and there's always lots of stepping stones on the way to that so yeah I'm excited group two this is great energy here and if you have to weather it if you have to be at this place for a while and I, I was in situations where I, I would have to be in a tough job or whatever and there'll be somebody like this and it's, oh, it's like, I know. And you've just got to bite your tongue and be humble and <laughs> carry on and, and know where you're going. Know in your heart that I'm going here, okay? Always know where you're going because then you can weather the place where you are because we've all got commitments, we've all got bills and mortgages and we can't just quit the job tomorrow sometimes you know we have to stick it out we have to just deal with it 
So now that you're consciously aware, you can just be there, but be less attached and less rattled or flustered, you know, when this person turns up because you know where you're going. You know that in, in you know, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty years time, I'm going to be there, whatever it is. Don't feel pressured that you have to, you know, do it all in a day or that kind of thing. But it's like this. Here it is. The, the, the cycles will change. And as you, and what I learned as well was when I, when I could embrace being in this difficult position with that difficult boss or whoever it is, when I could just relax and be okay with it and accept it totally, it would release. The next step would be shown to me. When I wasn't resisting it or wanting to get out or hating it, when I was just peaceful, when I was just neutral, when I was just in acceptance, that this is where I am. And when I got to that place of acceptance, of being there, that, that was how it, it released and let go. Isn't that interesting? And that's healing. Healership is loving, some, loving what is wholeheartedly and loving the mess and loving the crappy boss, right? I'm just going to have to say it. I, this person is difficult, I know. <laughs> but like, just, just, just appreciating it while in it and, and just being okay and, and you know I went down some tangents there I wasn't even looking at the time so let's open these all right oh how fantastic oh this is so perfect don't blame a clown for acting the clown ask yourself why you keep going to the circus absolutely look at that look at the humor in this statement as well this is funny she is a clown okay and or she uh, you know i'm sorry i don't want to be mean because she's got her spiritual journey and she can evolve and we have to forgive her and all that i know but <laughs> but yes i totally understand if you need to express yourself in the comments below please do please tell me who this boss is i would love to know or who this person is you know it could be it could be something that's not in a work situation as well so however this pans out please do tell me I love reading your stories. Okay, now let's have a look at this. The whole world yearns after freedom, yet each creature is in love with his chains. Oh, this is the devil, yes. This is the first paradox, an inextricable knot of our nature. Oh, how incredible. Yeah, look at that. And this, that's what this whole reading has been about. This has been about... You know, because the chains, the job, the rat race, the wheel, right? And this, yes, clown, <laughs> right? But, you know, and it's extraordinary. when, And this is why it's good to do stepping stones, to not just stop your job cold turkey and then run your own business. So I did it incrementally. And that's very helpful when you step into sort of part-time and you, you start doing it that way, gradually, incrementally, slowly because you get to learn your own rhythms as well. And it can actually, when you work totally for yourself, it can actually be very, um, you see this, they're in love with the chains. One of the things I realized and valued when I, when I start doing my own thing is that like that corporate world, it, it does have structure and the structure is actually, through the structure you can produce a lot. And when you've just got a blank slate and there's nothing, you have to build that structure. And sometimes there's no motivation to do that. And it can actually be quite difficult. This is why sometimes a lot of people, when they start their own business, they can actually be quite lost because there is too much time. There's too much freedom. There's too much nothing. And it's like, well, what do I do? And that can be a real problem. So, and I've been lucky with astrology because, you know, every month I have to get that video out, right? I have to get the monthly video out. So that has, there's natural structure in an astrology business. Isn't that incredible? So, but I could imagine if I was starting some kind of, I don't know, like a fashion business or something like, yeah, well, what would I do? Like how, what would, you know, yeah, all that. So it, this is all fascinating. Group number two, I'm excited for what's on the horizon for you. It's incredible pace yourself, enjoy the the unfolding of the cycles, you know, replacing the old cycle with the new ones. The new cycles are lined up, they're ready. It's all going to happen. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. 
Are they group number three? If you chose group number three, then you're in the right place. Now I apologize group three because I might have, I don't know if I've got this right. Were you Jupiter in the fifth house? Well, you are now <laughs> because I somehow put this back in the, the pile of these to shuffle them in full for everyone. So I don't know, I might have, I might have the wrong card here, but this is great. <laughs> You're still Jupiter. And this is a really nice card. So this is Jupiter in the fifth house, advisor to kings, learns history, art, loves ancient texts, soft-hearted, skilled lecturer, wealth from self-effort, enjoys chance like tarot has children and property okay wonderful so now before we shuffle these we're going to take one of these this is i think this is the sufi wisdom these are all upside down oh well you get a bonus you get work of art as well okay what does that say be the portrait of divine beauty i just realized i've been shuffling them upside down the whole time <laughs> I love this deck. It's so, I don't know, it's kind of dreamlike. It's really beautiful. I had the most amazing dream today. Let's see, while I shuffle, I'll tell you. Michael Jackson invited me to be one of his backup dancers. Isn't that amazing? I, didn't even, I don't even know what a backup dancer is. <laughs> and, but I was invited to be one. And I, th and I thought to myself, oh, I wanna be, and I said, can my mum come? And he said, yes. And I thought, great. And then, and I was thinking, okay, we'll be in the back row because that way if we make mistakes, nobody will know. So that was my dream today. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Just having the best dreams lately. It's been amazing. All right, let's see. Let's see what's going on group number. Oh, well, we got this. Did I not shuffle properly? Well, you are a work of art. Look at that. Be the portrait of divine beauty. All right, well, I mean, We've got this, you know, learns history, art, loves ancient texts. So this is very appropriate. Let's keep it. All right, that is really meant for you. It was on the back of the deck and it was in the shuffle. That's incredible. See, if a card wants to be here, it will. The divine makes it happen. Like, it, it's so amazing. Sometimes when I've shuffled and I get a card and then I'm like, oh, I don't like that one. I put it back in. I'll shuffle again and I get the exact same card. That happens to me. Ooh, expansion. Love it. <gasps> Look at the Jupiter colors that we've got going on here. This is all the Jupiter's all about expansion as well. This couldn't be more perfect. How incredible. Okay, loving this. Fantastic. Let's see what else we've got going on. This is interesting. And we've got these kind of purpley sort of purple lilacs. Yeah, and we've got the purple lilac here. So it's kind of Sixth chakra, seventh chakra type areas. Okay, wonderful. Let's see what else is going on. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. I thought I'd start like revealing cards sooner so that I can talk a bit more about the reading. More, more reading, less, less small talk. But look, we've already had some small talk, group three. I can't help myself. <laughs> I'm trying to fill it with more important stuff. But no, small talk still happens. <laughs> Told you about my dream. All right, let's have a look and see what comes here. I do quite like shuffling the tarot, especially all at once, though. There's something about that. Because mid shuffle, oh, is it raining? Yeah, I think it's raining. We've had so much rain in Sydney. It's just been incredible. All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, loving it so far. Three of Cups, celebration, fantastic. You're having a good time, group three. This is good. King of Pentacles, look at that. You're being asked to eat. Eat more chocolate cake, have some red wine. I think that's the guidance here, not sure, but <laughs> it's looking like that to me. There's some, some uh, grapes in the corner there. Oh, fantastic, Queen of Cups. Well, it just keeps getting better. Some lobster, perhaps. It's turned out to be a food recommendations reading. Is that a cat? Yeah, that's three cats. All right, this is good. Oh, and there's another cat here too, okay. 
like it. What else have we got going on? Okay, Nine of Swords. There's some, there's some drama in the story. Let's see. Let's see what's going on. Seven of Swords. Okay. And the Seven of Pentacles. All right. I feel like I kind of know what this is. I think you I feel like you're on the brink of clearing out some kind of old energy that has been deceptive and I don't know what this energy is. Is it a person? Is it just an energy? Is it, is it just the energy of deception? And I think it's that. I think it's the energy of deception is soon to leave your experience. And I think no one is going to be able to pull the wool over your eyes. Equally, I don't think you'll be pulling the wool over your own eyes. Okay. Because there's too much good. You see, when there's too much good, it's like this can't survive. I think you're going to be more authentic as well. And I've, I've been, it's so interesting. I have been thinking about this topic and I've been thinking about deceit and why, why do people come in and deceive us or want to do that or what, what is it about? And, and if that's coming into our experience, we carry some of that vibration. And so we have to look at, all right, well, where, where do, and this is assessment. This is you assessing, okay, where am I inauthentic? Where am I deceiving myself? You know, and deceiving ourselves is in simple things like thinking life is hard or I have to work really, really hard just to get by. That, that, though, that's not true because there are many people in the world who it's easy and you know to to have all this to be abundant and to enjoy life and it doesn't have to be such a struggle and maybe there maybe there are concepts or ideas these these are just ready it's like you're on the brink of just pushing this stuff out and moving into a new plane of existence where these things can't come in and bother you anymore. This is also reminding me of Louise Hay. She talked about how when she was young, and especially when I think she was quite young, she was in her teenage years, and she would attract especially men and people who would take advantage of her or abuse her or, or do these kind of things to her. And Well, she stopped and reassessed. That's what this seven, you know, a pentacles card is all about, stopping and reassessing and assessing. She stopped and assessed why was that happening to me? Why in my teenage years was I attracting the wrong crowd, the wrong people, people who would be bad to me? And in the pause, she was able to figure out that she was carrying some of that vibration in her somehow. And when she moved past that, a whole new world opened up and it, it, this expansion happened. And yeah, life became art for her, you know. She lived, like every day that she lived was like a work of art. It was so beautiful. And she would grow her own food and, you know, prepare it. She would, she, uh, I thought about this the other day, how she learnt from a handwriting expert how to improve her handwriting. And I thought, oh, I would love to do that one day, like if I have spare Money. I would love to have a handwriting coach. Like, how amazing would that be? You know, how luxurious. But why not? You know, and you can. You can have the things that you want, or the you know, how you want to grow and how you want to expand, and you can have that. And I think you know that. And I think it's it's all going to come in. It's just about clearing this little portion. Let's take a clarifier to see. Let's see a little bit more about this, this energy that you're going to evolve beyond now. So we want to take, we want to see what's going on here. What is, what is this about? 
Oh, sun in the ninth. Let's take it. That really wanted to be here. It just absolutely jumped out. And it's raining. <laughs> and there's rain on the window. I hope that comes in the recording. Let's have a look what this says. Sun in the ninth. Conflicts with father and or authority may change religion if afflicted. If well placed will be dutiful, ambitious, enterprising and fortunate. Yeah, interesting. So this could be something to do with relationship with father. Maybe you felt like maybe you felt like you didn't get the learnings from dad that you would have liked to have or maybe he fell short of teaching you what the world is really about or really like. Uh, it could be like this. Yeah. And because you weren't able to, let's see, yeah, I think, I think maybe you're seeing gaps in, you know, like, oh, if only I learned this when I was young, or if only I had a better relationship with my dad, then this wouldn't be happening. Yeah, and that this can be, for the, ex the example of like, yeah, Louise Hay, if she had had better time with her father, bonding with her father, maybe she wouldn't be attracting these men who come in and treat her badly kind of thing, right? So, yeah. This thing that you might be evolving beyond this could be quite deep rooted this could be from childhood this could be a big thing but I, I just get a strong sense that you're going to do it and it's not going to be hard the ego will make it out that it's hard the ego will make it oh you need to be in therapy for 10 years or something like that no that's don't believe that healing can be instantaneous it can be you know it's yeah, healing can be instantaneous, it's natural, it's free, and it's easy. Believe in that. Okay. Let's have a look. I want to see... What do I want to explore? In the assessment, is there anything in this assessing time, is there anything that you need to do? Or is this just about being peaceful? It's something about being conscious... Well, see, and that's the other thing. Do you need to be consciously aware of all these dynamics to heal them? I sometimes wonder that. Let's just see. What do you need to do in this pause and assessing period that you are now in? Is there anything you need to do? Let's have some more information about this. And then we'll get a couple of quotes. Okay. Let's keep going here. <laughs> yeah, this one. Oh, Mercury in the third house. Yeah, I'm getting a speak up thing. Like, also, okay, so what does it say? Mercury in the third house achieves excellence in communication, written and spoken, precision with hands. Yeah, actually, that. Um, Djokovic has that exalted here, I think. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, success in speculation, logic, popular. If afflicted, nervous breakdown. Okay, you're not... Aff Ooh. No, you're not afflicted. Don't worry about that. Uh, okay, let's see. This is a message of possibly... I was Earlier I was going to say speak up, but no, no I, I actually think this is, this is write it down. Write it out. Write, write how you feel on paper and journal it. And each morning, I did this the other day. I'm not very good at doing it every day. I would love to be able to be regular with this and do it every day. People do those morning pages where they write lots of stuff every morning. I'm, I, I never really got into that. But this is very much saying write it down. And I think write all of this stuff out and tear it up and put it in the bin. 
just as a and then celebrate okay and that is actually something that Deepak Chopra recommends he, these are his steps for clearing or getting rid of negativity bad emotions any of that he says write it all down tear it up burn it and then he says and go out and celebrate he really encourages the celebrate part uh, and it's fascinating because you've got a massive an entire row of celebration here so there's some you need to sit down write down all of your stuff what you felt you didn't get from childhood how you've been deceived how hard that's been for you all the pain all the hurt everything put it on paper write it down because what that does and this is what Kathy O'Brien she wrote uh, the or she was the author of PTSD time to heal and she says it transfers the memories from your subconscious emotional side of the mind into your logical side of the mind it goes through your arm onto paper it comes out right it really literally comes out onto paper onto ink you need to do it with ink you can't do it on your computer and type it out it doesn't work so yeah and then tear it up burn it i'm just conscious the time the thing is going to cut out yeah there's something to to burn up and let go and good you've done it you know when you celebrate feel the feeling of i've done it how amazing the camera just passed out at the place of i've done it isn't that amazing we exhausted the memory card you've done it look at that and now the new let's see what quotes come this should be quite interesting oh it's a big one wow we're gonna be here for a while <laughs> All right, it says a shark in a fish tank will grow eight inches, but in the ocean it will grow to eight feet or more. The shark will never outgrow its environment, and the same is true about you. Many times we're around small thinking people, so we don't grow. Change your environment and watch your growth. Isn't that incredible? That's this, that's expansion, and it's this, that's these two cards here. I'm always amazed by it. this quote thing is really cool. <laughs> um, so expansion and advisor to kings. You need to surround yourself with with better people as well. Okay, that's really important. You're a shark. You're not supposed to be in a fishbowl. <laughs> you gotta you gotta expand. Really important. It's time. Okay, love that. That's really great. And oh, another big one. Wow, okay. Many of us become over explainers because we've grown up attempting to be heard by people who intentionally want us to feel misunderstood. Wow. Our growth is recognizing we are not responsible to explain better, but to protect ourselves among those exploiting our vulnerability far out yeah this is the parent stuff this is this yeah and i've seen all this in me too like over explainer people pleaser all this stuff like yeah <laughs> i've got my work cut out for me all the time and saying like, oh there's another layer <laughs> but yeah i i i know what this is and people who intentionally want us to feel misunderstood. I mean, this can be like a father or a mother or some authority figure who's, they never hear you. They don't care what you have to say. You know, they, uh, yeah, I know. But our growth is in recognizing we are not responsible to explain better. Our growth is in not looking for the approval or the, you're an advisor to a king. Look at that. You are... And you're king like yourself, you know, like you need to be rubbing shoulders with the right people and, and yeah, king and queen types like you, right? You're, you're that. Now it's time to let go. That's the process of maturing, growing up, growing into an adult, moving out of home, all this stuff. This is what we do, isn't it? And don't worry if that's taking time. It's okay. A lot of this is, this is all internal stuff anyway. It doesn't matter how this looks on the outside. Our growth is 
recognizing we are not responsible to explain better, but to protect ourselves among those exploiting our vulnerability. Absolutely. Yep. And you might need to do some boundary work. And I thought about boundaries just the other day and I came up with a very good, I hope I remember it. I should write these things down. Um, sometimes I do. Uh, what was it? Yes. Erecting a boundary is a change in your energy. That's all it is actually. It's just you changing your own energy. It's not like you have to have any like go away vibes coming out of you. It's not that. It's you shifting internal. You shift your energy and you will ascend to another realm where these people can't even access you or know you exist. They won't even know you exist. How fantastic would that be? And that's where you're headed. This is great. Group number three, thank you so much for tuning in. And let me know how you got in, in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. I always love hearing everybody's stories and how this stuff works out. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.